Good afternoon folks, it's Steve Cow 5 j I hope everyone's having a good weekend and so forth. So, uh, Dad and I, we did a little project. We were looking to figure out a way to get a keyer for uh, our radio, our FT991A, and for to actually have a practice key. So our dilemma was, we wanted to have a key back here at the station so we could practice Morse code. But we also wanted to have a key that we could actually use it on the radio. So we were thinking, uh, I looked at some of the keys. Some of them were pretty, I don't want to say cheap, they were just light, not very heavy. One of the things about this MFJ557 uh, is it's heavy and it doesn't go anywhere. You can sit here and bang on this thing all day long and it, 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 it's, it's, it's like a brick. So it's really, really good quality. So we got to thinking, uh, we said, you know what, well let's do this, let's put a double pull, double throw switch in there. And what this switch does, is this switch allows us now to use the actual keyer itself, but what we did, we added a double pull, double throw switch. So when the switch is in the forward position, we actually are sending our contact closure to this here, and when it's in the other position, now what we're doing is we're actually connected into the radio and what I did is we've got a little cable here that comes out and I'll show you how we wired that in just cut a little uh, hole right here with some dikes and drilled the hole for the switch so what happens now is when you go over to the radio there you there that's that's it right there so what happens now is I've got this end of it and what's nice about this is that's a 90 degree so there's really no stress on it. I've got it plugged in and it looks really good. We've got it just kind of running along the, st the side of the radio there and it's pretty much out of the way so it really doesn't get in the way of anything. So what can happen is now in one mode I can use the keyer and if I flip the switch, excuse me, if I this is the MFJ and if I flip the switch the other way I'll go here to turn on break in. We're going into a dummy load. Break in's on, so now we'll actually transmit. And of course, if I turn break in off, now we're not transmitting. But you can still hear the code. So that's it. I'll go into a little more detail again. It's just uh, essentially what we did. I went to Micro Center purchased the cable assembly which I'll show you here is this little guy right here and we did some soldering and cutting and testing with an ohm meter and voila we had a interface cable so I'll go ahead and finish up the rest of the video but again our, our little project for the day is we added a double pull double throw switch so this direction it it, the, it keys the 991A and this direction it keys the oscillator here so, okay, we'll be back. I've got uh, more details coming. Thanks again. All right, folks. <laughs> Welcome back there. Uh, this one to start out. Uh, uh, this is the actual um, Kerp cable I purchased. I got this one from Micro Center. So this kind of, uh, this is kind of where the project started. Um, so real nice cable. Okay, this is uh, one thing that's important on the FT991A in the, in the technical manual or the operating manual. It discusses uh, the pin. It's a 3.5 millimeter three ring is what they call it, three rings. And uh, this is important because if you have a two ring, which is a monaural plug, it will not work. So one thing that's important. And of course, this cable I have does have the correct cable. So just a piece of information there. Okay, so this is actually how the schematic works. It's a double pull, double throw switch, essentially. So in this particular configuration here, the uh, keyer will be directly wired to the MFJ, just as it is normally. So a couple of things here. The two gray wires are, are what you're going to connect to. Uh, that's the input that directly comes from the keyer before the mod. So the other position of the switch will direct the keyer straight to the radio. So in this mode here, this just kind of shows you uh, how the, uh, the it would actually key the MFJ. Okay, this section, this uh, screen here shows you <coughs> the configuration when you would actually have it uh, flipped to the alternate position of the switch. And in this position here, it will actually 
uh, the FT991A will key up when you press down on the straight key. So that's the beauty of the switch. You can isolate the radio or the actual MFJ. So that's pretty cool. One thing I forgot to mention in this cable here, it actually has, you saw it in the video earlier, a right, end, a right angle end and a straight end. So what I did was I cut the straight end about uh, a foot or two back and uh, so the right angle will actually plug into the radio. So you strip back the cable first and then what happens is uh, you have to be real careful here. Use some uh, specific wire strippers and then what will happen next is as you move forward you will actually this is what you'll end up with here so once this uh, once you have this then what you'll want to do is you'll want to go ahead and get ready to because eventually what we're going to do is we're going to cut the white wire but i'm going to show you exactly how we go through that uh, process there of what we're uh, doing so this uh, right here now what will happen next is this is what you'll typically want to do is dress it. And now what I did was I took these, the uh, foil off, wrapped up the strand. And then what I did was I checked it with an ohm meter. Now what's important here is you want to make sure <coughs> that you've got the correct continuity on it. <coughs> now what's important here is we are actually monitoring, we are checking from the very tip of the three ring, which is part of the connection for the FT991A. We're checking ohms to make sure and confirming that the white cable is in fact the one <coughs> that we want to use. And then what we'll do next is now we're checking the shield, which goes to the, uh, you can see there on the clip, the very base of the first ring. So now that's connected. So what we're doing here is we're essentially confirming that the red wire is the wire that we're going to cut. Okay, again, this is uh, now we've cut the red wire. So now we have just the shield and the uh, white wire. Now what I did on mine was I actually used some heat shrink, two sizes, one's like an uh, eighth of an inch and the other side is like three thirty seconds of an inch. And what I did is I actually ran the heat shrink over the shield just to protect it. Then you actually uh, go ahead and put, it, <coughs> put a heat gun on it and uh, just verify. Uh, just heat everything down. Just make sure you don't uh, get the temperature too hot on it. But uh, that's what it looks like when I'm done. In this slide here, we're just re-verifying our polarity just to make sure we have it correct. It doesn't really matter the polarity per se. You just got to make sure you're on the first ring and the third ring on the for the FT9918 to work. And that, that uh, wire test looks good. And here's the second wire test, just verifying it going back to the shield with the red heat shrink on it, and that uh, test looks good. So the cable is ready to go. This is the switch that we used. Uh, what what we did, what Dad does, is he pre-wires them for his railroad, and this is, I was actually able to just take advantage of the wires. There's an alternate uh, view of the switch. And all we did was we simply mounted the switch into the MFJ, <coughs> and we connected the wires appropriately per the schematic and there's our switch so in one position the switch will key the mfj keyer and when the switch is in the alternate position it will actually key the ft991a so that part of it works pretty good it's really a good design it uh, i've had real good luck with it and so forth um, uh, there's the actual connector going into the radio, so it's really really nice. I like the right angle of it that way It doesn't actually cause any trouble and then of course you can see how we ran the cable along so uh, For the most part, that's uh, that's my mod for the MFJ 557 and uh, it works good And just to wrap up again, this is the mod again. We're cutting the cable uh, up there where the X is and again, this is the double pull, double throw switch in one position. The uh, in this position here, it's the straight key will key up the MFJ, um, isolating the radio. So you've got the radio uh, isolated from the MFJ, so there's no harm of any damage or anything. And whenever you flip the double pull, double throw switch to the opposite direction. Now the FT991A will be keyed by this straight key. So the nice thing of it is I only spent like eight bucks because I, I, some of the keys I looked at, they were kind of 
I don't know. I don't want to say cheap. They were just not very heavy. This MFJ557, it's a very heavy key. It's like a brick, and I love it. The beauty of it is if Dad or I want to practice code, we can do it all day long. Or if we want to actually get on the air, we can do that too. So anyway, 73 KI5JUF. Have a great day, and thanks again for watching. Appreciate it.